Kimberly from the Fat Quarter Shop and I have Piggy with me. Piggy's my little dog. He's my little buddy. He stays with me when I sew. Um, so I just wanted to thank all of you for joining. Uh, definitely give us a thumbs up on this video and if you watch our videos on YouTube, subscribe and give us thumbs up. Comment. We love all the comments. We're trying to build our community so the more um, love we can get from y'all is helpful. Um, join uh, in Facebook. If you ever want to chat directly with me, you can join Kimberly Stitch Squad. That's on Facebook. Um, I look at that like probably 10 times a day. Um, so, and especially if you tag me, I'll see what you say. Um, and then always uh, comment and let me know kind of what you want to see in the live streams. A lot of what I have done and am doing in the future is from you guys' comments. So um, keep commenting there. I'm going to be doing a live stream next Tuesday. So um, I'm going to work on it this weekend, what I'm working on. But um, next week's not going to be Friday. It's going to be Tuesday. And we do a live stream every week. Um, and I am starting a new thing called Subscriber of the Week where they get a prize. So my subscriber this week is Gabriel um, Fuentes. Gabriel Fuentes. So Gabriel knows me, uh, direct message me, and I will work with you on your prize. Um, so I thought I would start off with maybe a couple of things that I've been working on or like stuff you can find on Fat Quarter Shop's blog. So the first thing I have is um, this is totally Melissa Mortensen's idea. If you click on the link below, and we've got a link directly to her blog. So basically when we were at market, she had the cutest booth that had a little bed in it and she had shoes and they were all decorated. So we thought, oh, that's super cute. We wanna bring that to you guys. So it's her idea. What we did is took her idea with her permission and we um, made some cute shoes. So these are my shoes. Um, the instructions are on her blog. We also have a blog on it um, just kind of showing the same thing she did but maybe in our colors. So both of those links to those blogs are below. Super easy. Um, you have to use fabric glue and it, you know, it, it can be a little tedious. So these are my shoes and then these are Aneri's shoes. Aneri does our social media. So she did white with like gray and you just use like a zigzag stitch on the edge so that's something that we did recently so check out our blog melissa's blog she's a designer for riley blake another thing i did is you saw this pillow that i did uh, last week there is a video on how you do this there's also going to be a blog post on it so check that out um, but oh. sorry someone's asking is this really live yeah it's really live uh can you say their name the okay inexorable quilter the what? The inexorable quilter. Inexorable quilter. It is really live. So, um, this is the new Acorn Table Runner by Lori Holt, but I did change it. So, it comes in this cute little box, which I'm going to actually use for decoration. In it is the pattern. The pattern is only available in the box. It's not available separately. It has a charm pack the acorn top, the binding, and the background, all in here, super cute. Um, I do wanna mention what I did to mine because I always change everything. So I have a really long, long table. So I added six acorns to the end, but I basically bought more background and another charm pack. And then I added a tiny, tiny border to the edge just because my table, I wanted it to fill the table. So this is my acorn table runner. And on the back, I put a cute little label that I got from Sweetwater. She has, Sweetwater has a label club. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I'm not making money off of this. But I am in their label club, and so the label comes every month with your name. So I kind of put that on there, just so that it's cute. I'm gonna actually write on it the year. Um, but that's what I have been working on, uh, shoes and this table runner. So I did that and then, um, I'm going to answer some of you guys' questions and I'm going to show you some other stuff. So our first question from Facebook from Melissa Hunter or Melia Hunter, how do you figure out how much thread you need to machine quilt to quilt? 
So I um, don't have very much experience, but I asked my quilter, my long arm quilter, and we have King Tut. This is 500 yards. He said this size would make a queen size quilt. So um, we've got this, but then King Tut also comes in huge cones. So, you know, depending on what you need, you can get a cone or, I mean, a spool or a cone. And we also have a lot of new thread at Fat Quarter Shop. Um, we've just been buying new thread. We've got Omni Superior. We've got this really cool, I haven't tried it yet, um, Glow in the Dark Thread. Super excited about that. More King Tut. We've got Bobbin Line, which is good for bobbins in um, Logar Machines. Signature um, Polyester Thread. Wonderful. Yeah, so people have been asking for Wonderful, so we got some Wonderful in. We got this, and we've got um, some boxes that are pre-done from some designers. So just to let you know, we have got some new thread in, and hopefully that answers your question. How do you organize your alpha bitties? So, uh, I have these Kilner jars that I got um, on Amazon, and I just have all my alpha bitties in the jar. Um, I love the pink, so I just have the pink. You know, it would be better organized if I had it A, B, C, D, so it would be easy to find, but that would take up too much space. Um, so that's how I organize them. And I also keep my um, Wonder Clips in another jar, and I've got like three jars of these. Um, Michelle Guffey wants to know, here's one, do I really need to square up my finished quilt before binding? So I actually, when I have a quilt, I have my quilter quilt it, and I have them leave the batting on. I do not have them trim my quilt. Then I go and I trim a quarter inch away from the edge. I trim all four sides. Now when I'm doing that, I try to make sure that it is pretty square. I'm not super anal retentive about it. Um, that and then I put my binding on and I leave that hat that quarter inch there. So that's how I square mine up. Um, some people do it totally different where they actually go right to the edge. I don't do that. Um, so that's kind of how I do it. Um, are there plans to open a walk-in shop? Uh, that has been a question forever. Uh, no, uh, I think we do what we do great because we can you know ship fast. Um, if I had a second, Kimberly, that would be great. I just don't think that like me or my husband have time. Uh, do you drink coffee or just hot chocolate? Only hot chocolate. I had one this morning. Um, I do not drink coffee. Uh, I have never had a cup of coffee actually. But I drink tea and I'm super, super nuts about my tea. When I order my tea, it has to be extra ice, no water, no sugar, and most Starbucks can't even do it right. But the best tea is at Chili's, so. That's my advice if you like tea. How do you get rid of, how do you, tips on how to get perfect points. I starch my fabric. I have a video on YouTube. I have two videos on YouTube. It is Lisa Bonjean's idea from Primitive Gatherings. I starch everything and that seems to uh, make my fabric very stiff. I'm careful when I cut. I go really slow. I iron, I use steam. Um, and I just have been doing this for 25 years probably. So. You know, you just it just becomes instinct when you've been doing it long enough. How much do you, I love, do you love us? Of course I love you guys, and Peach asked that. She's hilarious, so hi, Peach. Um, Cindy Griffith says, I love to learn how to use the search function on Fat Quarter Shop. So actually, that is a great question because we are upgrading, and we have a new program rolling out. Of course, it's behind the scenes, so you won't see it. It will be out by the end of September, so you will be able to search our site. So I'm so glad that somebody asked that. Um, do I need to square up the quilt top before pinning it to batting and backing, or do I just wait to square it up until after? Um, I don't square up my quilt top. I just try to be careful when I'm adding. When I add my borders, I make them longer. I just cut them longer, and then I square the, the edge of my quilt like my, um, like, okay, here, this has a border. So when I attached this border, for example, I left this background fabric longer. And then what I do is I square it up by putting 
a ruler here and then I just square both sides and that just gives me a really nice um, corner. So I do that instead of squaring up. I'm not sure if that would be considered squaring up. If you want to pause for a second, we've got some questions and okay. comments about things you've been talking about. Okay. Um, first of all, Gina Tell says, hi, hi ladies. Hi, Gina. Um, and then let's see, Diana says she has her pink alphabeties in a tiny Hello Kitty lunchbox. Oh, that's cute. Um, Mary Davenport is asking, what is the difference between Wonder Fill and Aura Fill? Okay, so Wonder Fill, I believe, is 100% polyester. Oops. Yeah, it's polyester, so it is thicker. Um, a lot of people, well, I don't want to say a lot, but like Violet Craft uses it. Um, I don't use polyester. I only use Aura Fill, but um, it's just stronger, and some people use poly on their quilting a lot of people won't because they think that because it's poly the you know later like 50 years from now the thread might snap because the the it's not cotton on cotton so i use cotton on cotton um but we have had people asking for wonderful so that is why we got it um i'll probably try it out though at some point all right along the same lines um ally caps on instagram was asking uh what is orafil thread for i tried to sew pieces together and it stretched and broke it stretched and broke okay so orafil is uh it is thinner but it is stronger and so basically just adjust your tension and that will go away my thread never uh breaks but um i would mess with your tension or uh, make sure you have a new needle, um, but I think Arfil is great. It's um, all I use. I have uh, drawers. I'll show you. I have drawers and drawers of Arfil. Um, I'm actually, if y'all can believe it, out of Color 2000. I have used all of it, so I actually need to order a ton of it. Um, but yeah, I love Arfil. All right, and Diane Duncan is asking, is the table runner for beginners? Oh, it's really good. It's for beginners. So the way you piece it is this is one rectangle with two corner squares. This is just three rectangles on the top. This is a rectangle with two squares. And then you just add the sides and then you just do corner squares. So it's very easy, very beginner friendly. Um, that took me maybe maybe two days but it was like in between doing kids stuff it was really easy all right and then brooke hag hey uh is asking did you quilt your table runner under sashiko machine no um so i'm not brave enough i had a, a long arm quilter do it and they used they call this chicken wire um it's super long and I don't think I would have time, even if, um, I think I probably could do it. I just don't think I um, would have the time to get that done. But I am going to use it this weekend for my um, live stream that I'm doing next week. So I am going to be using it this weekend. All right. And Jennifer Keeney is asking, where did you get the metal cart behind you? Oh, I've had this for five or six years. It's from Ikea. I think they might have discontinued this color. Um, Michael's has some in pink. I don't think they roll around as good, um, but this is from Ikea. They also have them at Michael's and I think Home Goods actually has them now too. Cool. Okay, you can go back to Okay, so um, tips for doing the final quilt assembly. I've got cutting, piecing, and ironing down. I get wonky when I put the long rows of sewn blows, blocks together. So when I do, I used to have that problem when I was new, and I think it was just because uh, I didn't starch, but I would just pin a lot. When you put those rows together, just pin. I always start at uh, one end, the other end, then the middle, and then just all the seams and kind of work out. So I think that just comes with experience and practice and um, you'll get it. Sewing long strips of fabric together on a jelly roll sometimes gets uneven by the time I'm done. So on that, I would make sure you set your seam before you press. And then if it starts getting wonky, there's nothing wrong with taking a ruler and just, um, just 
cutting, you know, like an eighth of an inch off and just get it straight again and keep going. No one is going to know that your quilt is like one eighth of an inch off. So um, there's nothing wrong with trimming as you go. When you use starch, when do you use starch on your fabric? When cutting pieces, pressing fabric, or when? So I have videos on this. Go to YouTube. Go to uh, YouTube, right? Yeah. And just search Kimberly, sorry, Kimberly Jolly Starching, and you will figure out exactly how I do it. It's in the description as well. Oh, wait, the link is in the description also below. Um, want another treat? He wants a treat. So also, um, when I am piecing my blocks, I don't use starch again, so you won't see starch unless I have like a crease I can't get out, but I do use steam. So I use steam as I do my blocks and I always set my seam before I press to the other side. Carol is looking for a really quick and easy pattern to make reusable grocery bags. Uh, so if anybody has one of those, go to Kimberly Stitch Squad and put a link for Carol Golden Loomis for a reusable grocery bag. She needs help with that. Uh, Mary wants to know when you choose a pattern, what is your next step in choosing the fabric or do you choose the fabric first? Um, if you have 16 pattern, fat quarters and a pattern calls for 20, how would you add? So I like to use um, blenders. So Essential Dots uh, by Moda are great. Grunge by Moda is always a good thing to add. Kisses by Riley Blake is good. Hashtag by Riley Blake is good. Um, the pin dots and the small tiny dots, um, Swiss dots from, from uh, Riley Blake are good. So I just will add a blender. I personally would add a blender before I would add a solid. That's just personal preference. I usually find the pattern first and then the fabric second. Um, but it just, I think that just depends. If I see a fabric that I love, I will come up with something to make it. Or if I see a pattern that I love, I'll come up with something to make it. So I think it's just if you love something enough, you just do it, you figure out a way. Why is my sew sampler box for Australia stay in pre-shipment for long? So the way we run our sew sampler club is we run the club we have to run it all the same day, the way our computers work. We run all the credit cards. It takes us eight hours just to run the club. And then the very first orders that go out, the first day is all just international shipments. The next two days are US orders. So it's the fastest we can possibly do it. And then once it gets to the USPS hub, they don't track it in every city. So like we're in Austin. So it'll probably go through the Buda hub and then it'll go to Dallas then it'll go to Kansas City but they don't scan it in every city USPS does it they will scan it when they um, it leaves the country so I think that's just a post office thing can okay, this one is a good question can we get a more Tula pink fabric like the cave facet quarterly shipment so that's something that I'm going to talk to my team about um, I would love some more feedback from you Cheryl Burke on what you would like to see because she doesn't come out with a line every quarter. So would you like to see a club that we do each time her collection comes out? Would you like the club to just be, hey, every time Tula comes out with a, a collection, you get a fat quarter of all of it, and this is what it costs per fat quarter. Or you get a half yard and then a pattern on top of it? Or kind of what are you looking to see? Because I can definitely do this. So. Right, we could pause and answering a lot of questions. Okay. Um, uh, Cheryl Armstrong, hope I said that right, um, Instagram is asking, do you do your own cutting and piecing? Oh yeah, yeah. And I, my favorite part is cutting and starching. So before we did this video, I was actually uh, starching. I will, my kids are at school right now, they get out at three, so I will probably um, get everything cut that I'm gonna piece this weekend. Uh, because my kids actually play roadblocks in here on my computer and so it becomes all four of them. It becomes complete chaos in here and then they dance some Fortnite dance. They don't even play the game but they just do some dances. So I have to like cut everything while they're at school and then you know piecing is like no big deal. Alright Rochelle Rodriguez is asking will you be at the Houston Quilt Convention this year? 
So I won't. We did a booth one year. It was just too hard on being away from my kids for two two weeks and my husband and I are very um, family centered and it is just more important for me to be around my kids than to be gone. You know, when they get older, we might try it again, um, but no. Uh, I will be at the quilt market, which is not open to the public, but I'm gonna go to that. And I'm only gonna go this time for one day. I've always gone for two, but Christopher's birthday is on that Sunday, so gotta come home. But I'll still buy all the fabric, don't worry. Uh, Vicki Robles, she just had a comment to share. She said, good morning all. Exciting to catch this program live as I am, am always late and end up watching the videos later. So. Oh, hi. Shout out to Vicky Vicky. says hi. Um, Donna Brotherson is asking, do you design the patterns for It's So Emma? I don't. I have a great team that is Jocelyn, Sarah, Crystal and Nova and they do all the patterns. I have done lots of patterns in the past. Um, I just have a really great team and their designs are better than mine so we use theirs. Uh, at some point when I get more time I will probably design more but lots of stuff in the Fat Quarter Baby. I did a lot of the designs in Fat Quarter Baby. Um, so yeah I mean I used to do more. Um, Right. We've got lots of people just saying that they love the table runner. Oh, it's so cute. Thanks. If y'all just joined, this is it. So I just made mine bigger. So my table is bigger. So the table runner and the table runner, let me show you this because this was also something that somebody asked me in my group. The way she wrote it is you can either do five by four, which makes a square or you can make it like a cross. So there's two different ways you can make it. I made mine a cross, added a border, and then made it longer. Um, and I mean, we have a lot of these kits, but they definitely, um, Riley Blake only made so many, so. All right, and Barb Lee is asking, or saying, I want that shirt. Oh, love it. So this shirt is, uh, we sell it at Fat Quarter Shop. You can just search Eat Sleep Quilt. It is designed by Lori Holt, and I wear it all the time. Like sometimes, because I have a lot of them, like I'll wear it like a couple days in a row. Uh, and then Sherry Clifton, she just had a cool comment. She said, hello from your biggest fan in North Carolina. Oh, hi, I've never been to North Carolina. Um, Vicki Robles had a suggestion about the thread conversation earlier. She says, I know that I used the monofilament threads many years ago and all of the quilts I gave as gifts have broken in places. Um, how are the new ones and do you use them? So I don't use monofilament. I don't like it. Um, I think it breaks. I have a Juki machine, which is actually super powerful. I tried it a couple years ago. I just don't, um, I have zero patience in real life, so uh, I and I also with my Juki, I love the way it works, and I don't like to mess with the tension on it. Um, I don't know, it's not for me, but it does. I mean, it's just think about it; it's putting kind of like a plastic material on cotton, so it is going to break. It's you know, but it has its purposes. Um, Linda Jaster is saying, "Wishing you had a catalog." Oh, yeah. We sell out of stuff way too fast to have a catalog. Uh, let's see. And then, uh, back on the thread topic, Sweet Tooth Sue, that is a cute name, says, can you free motion quilt with Aurafil? What would you use in the bobbin? Yeah, you can free motion. I would just, I would just use either 50 on the top and 50 on the bottom or 40 on the top and 40 on the bottom. Either 50 or 40. They have cones now. Um, that they came out with about a year and a half ago, 40 weight, and it comes on cones and it is meant for long arming. So if I was gonna use Arfil, that's what I would use. Uh, Donna Darling on Instagram says, I adore you. Oh, thanks. Uh, let's see, uh, love your dog. People are like, pug. It's Piggy. Uh, His Instagram is the Piggy Pug. I hardly ever post, um, but he's my little buddy. Uh, and Donna Darling is also asking, how many years have you owned your shop? Fifteen. So I got married in February 1st, 2003, and I started Fat Quarter Shop May 24th, 2003, so. 
Uh, Pat Chandler is asking, do you starch a truck pack? Yeah, I do. If you need a five inch square though, you obviously can't starch because it is going to shrink. So um, I do starch and I will adjust my pattern either down or, um, yeah, I never, I really never make anything without starching because I just don't like the process. I end up using my seam ripper way too much. So I'll adjust my pattern or buy something larger. I'm really um, wasteful sometimes when it comes to that. Uh, let's see, and Cynthia Earls Cleveland is asking, oh no, she's talking about the carts. She's saying you can get that type of cart in that color in Walmart. Walmart. Uh, apparently, according to Tony Napier, Costco has some too, and they have gold ones. Ooh, maybe I'll have to go to Costco. Our Costco is not that great. Um, and also, like, I feel like when I go to Costco, like, I have four kids, and it's just like, get me out of here. Because they don't like to grocery shop. My kids hate to grocery shop. They don't even care what, like, they don't even, like, you know, they take snacks to school. They complain about the snacks, but they do not want to pick the snacks out. I don't care. I could take them to, like, I don't know. They just, they hate shopping. So they just are like, please, can we go? They don't even care about the samples. Most kids are like, can I have the samples? They're like, can we just get out of here? Um, Denise Henry says, I know this is off subject, when will you start Meet the Makers? I was one of the lucky ones that got on when it came back in stock. Thanks, Kimberly. So on the Meet the Makers, they are starting that later in August. I can't remember the exact date. The information should be on Riley Blake's blog and uh, social media posts. I know they did an Instagram post and it's like a paragraph and it tells when it's going to start. And we are going to have more kits in October. We had no idea that it was going to be like this popular, so we just didn't order enough. Sorry. Um, Denise Hankel is asking, what is the very cute binder on the table? Okay, so the binder is Erin Condren. I love all her stuff, and I was going to show y'all kind of like a little behind the scenes of what I do. And this, um, I proof every it's so Emma pattern book, every pattern in the sew sampler box. I have a whole checklist. I have a ton of them. And I have been proofing this book. It's called Vintage Christmas since last Saturday. I'm just gonna kind of show you how I proof. And you'll see all the marks. Like I haven't done the back, but I have notes. Um I check like every single name, every single size, every single quote, you know, inch mark, um, like, you know, every little thing. I check, it's crazy. So, uh, this book is Vintage Christmas. It is by Lori Holt and it is going to the printer hopefully on Tuesday. And it is such a massive book because it comes with a fold over cover and a spiral bound that it takes them five, four to five weeks to print. And then it has to ship from Minnesota to Texas. But I just kind of wanted to show y'all cause I do take, well, I mean, we as a company as a whole also take really good pride to make sure that our patterns don't have mistakes. And I mean, at some point we're probably gonna have a mistake, um, but cross our fingers, we try really hard. Um, and then we have a new book that we're gonna be announcing on Monday. Um, I, uh, I will show it to you in next week's live stream. It's already written and it's about to go to the printer. I'm gonna be proofing that right after I do this and after I do all the stuff I have to do for the live stream Tuesday. All right, Amy Garson Brown says, your pup is a great weight, you usually see plump. Pugs. Oh, so I'm, he is super, um, he wants to eat everything and anything and I just don't. Um, I, he has treats, but we don't typically feed him uh, people food. If we have barbecue, I will bring him meat, but that is very rare. Um, also, he goes for several walks. That is part of my, he went for a walk with me this morning before we filmed, 20 minute walk to get him tired. Um, but uh, he takes lots of walks. My kids, if they do not have dance or karate, they, that is part, they have a checklist of chores they have to do every day, like make their bed, wipe the counters. One of them is walk the dog. So he is very healthy. Marsha Baker is asking, do you have any patterns for a twin size bed runner using jelly rolls? I don't 
don't know. I know no, I know that there was a Bed Runner book by Martingale, so you might want to look for that. I don't think we have it anymore, but it's called Bed Runners, and it has a lot of really good designs in it too. So I would look for that. Also, Thimble Blossoms by Camille Rossnelli oh. says, Hi Kimberly, hi Lily, happy Friday girls. Hi, and I have something to email you that is gonna like you're gonna like love it. I actually was gonna email you this morning and then was like, oh, let me text her instead, but you're gonna like, you're gonna just die when you see it. Also, we just released your fabric tape video. That's on our YouTube. Oh yeah, we just did a video on how she makes fabric tape and we have a lot of videos coming out um, with her. All right, give me, okay, we can go back to your list. We okay. Have a lot of Okay, people have been asking about tank tops. That is in the works. We're probably, you know, still about four to six weeks out, but that is in the works. Uh, do all fat quarter shop kits come with enough fabric to use starch? Yes. Um, especially our block of the month. If you buy a block of the month from us, it, we, you will always have enough fabric because I sew our block of the month to test them and I starch. So, yeah, you will have enough. Tricks for making small half square triangles for feather star blocks and the Christmas figs block the month. I would use triangle paper. I don't have the book in front of me to remember the size, but I would use triangle paper. For triangle paper, the most popular size is two inch finish. Um, I don't know what size this is, but I only use triangles on a roll. There's lots of brands of triangle paper. This is the only one I use. I keep it, um, let me see. I keep them in this little bucket along with like background fabric that I am in the middle of using. But I keep it in a little bucket so that I can always get to it, put washi tape on the end. But my biggest tip would be figure out what size you need. So if your square, if your half square triangle should be unfinished two and a half, that means two inch finished. So I just, I always use triangle paper. I starch, that would be my biggest tip. That block actually didn't give me too much trouble, um, but I starched my fabric before. I used triangle paper, um, and if it doesn't, if the if you don't have triangle paper that makes the exact size, I still use triangle paper. Pull the paper off and then trim down to what it needs to be. Do I pre-wash? No, um, I don't. Uh, do you compile the items for the sew sampler box yourself, and you get excited as we do? And will there be a jolly box? Cody does the sew sampler box. Me and Kevin obviously help. We're always giving, I mean, we pick the fabric with her, but she really works on the notions, the pattern, the design, the theme, the everything. Um, we listen to every single comment, whether it is positive or negative or whatever. Like, we make changes. We listen um, to what y'all say, and it is fun. Um, I wish that I could make every single project that is in them. Uh, we are gonna have a jolly box, and we're also gonna have some other boxes. So we will probably have another box very soon, and it's cute. Many of our quilters use cotton fabric, especially for little girl dresses. What do you re recommend for lining? I am not a seamstress, so uh, I don't know, but that would be a great question to just put on the Kimberly Stitch Squad on Facebook because there are people on there that will know. Um, do you plan to design a fabric line? No. Can you explain how to use triangle paper? So um, I've done a lot of videos on triangle paper. Um, basically you put your fabrics right sides together, you sew on the dotted line, you cut apart. If your instructions call for two and seven eighths, your finished size will be two inches. So whatever your cut size is, if you take 0.875 or seven eighths of an inch away, that is your finished size. And then you look at your triangle paper and your triangle paper will say um, three inch finished, two inch finished. Um, so that would be my tip. What's my favorite pattern, go-to pattern? I love the cobblestone, fat quarter cobblestones, which is a free fat quarter shop pattern. You can find it on the free pattern page. It is a shortcut quilt. We've got a video on YouTube. It is so easy. You can make it in like two hours. Will the large vintage trim be available in the three yard size like it was in the sew sampler box? No. 
Um, that's we had that custom made for the so sampler box, and you have to get you know a large quantity for them to cut that down. Um, which pins are the best for pinning? I use uh, Collins. They're uh, they're a white head. They're one and three eighths inch long. They're very thin. The SKU number is C103, and this, that's what I use. Do you ever use batiks? No, um, I don't, and I don't, I don't, I don't. Um, Fat Quarter Shop has videos of quilters showing favorite notions. What are yours? So I put mine out, um, Arful Color 2000. This is actually color 2405 because I'm out, but I always use 2000. I use the Clover Seam Ripper. I have literally like eight of these and I have broken them one time, only one time. I like ginger scissors for cutting um, corner squares off. I like a friction pin for drawing my lines. I use, these are the only little scissors that I use for cutting thread. They're omni grid, they're expensive, um, but I love them. I have about five pair. I use the Collins pins we talked about and a Grabbit. I have several of the Grabbits. And I use a Taylor's Clapper to flatten my block. And I actually use two because what I'll do, like this was a block at one time. So I actually kind of put it sideways just to get the whole, just to get the full effect and so I don't have to like move it to get it flat. Um, and I use, this is the only rotary cutter I use. It's the Ergo Grip. I think also I've had this for like tw literally 20 years. So those are my notions. I use Creative Grips rulers also. Um, so those are my favorite notions. Also, uh, we have this stash in store. It is on my sewing machine table and I use this a lot to store like scissors. You see how many of these scissors I have this um and i put it in the middle and usually my friction pin is in there but i kind of moved it but so this we have this in a lot of colors um so i have that and then we have some new bonnie and camille washi tape it is so cute so i have that on my machine now so those are some of my favorite things very basic um things if you want to jump back onto the okay. ones we're seeing right now uh we just have so many this is awesome um, Kelly Griffin Nielsen says hi from your Moda rep. <laughs> hi, she's our Moda rep. We bought all the new Moda yesterday. Um, so that should be, if you want to check out our coming soon page next Monday, you will see all of the new Moda. And there's some really good stuff. All right, and then I don't know if we've gotten to that question yet on ours, but um, somebody else, Carmen Weston, asked, can you just buy the pattern for the table runner? Or is it only oh, available in the kit? It's only in the kit. So it's just a little um, basic pattern, but yeah, Riley Blake only put it in the kit. And 7459 Serenity is asking, can you use batiks when making something for the microwave? I have no idea. I know that batiks are hand dyed. I don't know, maybe you could like take it and put water on it and put it in the microwave before you make it and see what it does. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark. Huber Hubbard is asking, uh, what is the price of the table runner? I have no idea. Sorry. Uh, if, uh, you if you just, yeah, click on the link. We've got a link below. Um, you can just click and it'll take you there. All right. We've got a few questions about Stitch Squad. Uh, Cynthia Earls Cleveland is asking, can you repeat the website to post the reusable bag pattern? I have two that I love. So for the person okay. that's asking. So if you go to Facebook, there is a group called Kimberly's Stitch Squad. You can just ask to join. Um, I will approve it when we get off uh, the video and then you can just post your question and then people will comment. Um, Janice Ahrens is asking how many hours do you quilt every day? Oh, there's days where I will quilt like 10 hours straight and there are days, weeks where I won't sew at all. So I kind of am one of those like, I'll do a lot um, like today, this weekend, uh, early next week and then I probably won't for like a week. But then we have a book coming out that has, um, we have two things coming out that need quilts. So when I have like a book that I need to sew for, I will just knock it out and like, I can make like a king size quilt in two days. So it's kind of comes and goes, but I wish I sewed eight hours every day. 
Um, Debbie Brinkham Schultz is asking, so you need an extra charm pack to make the table runner larger? Yeah, to make it larger, I bought um, an extra charm pack and the uh, background you need extra. This is uh, cinnamon and uh, the confetti cottons, Riley Blake. And then I bought, I mean, of course, you know, when I added this, I had to add um, extra. Uh, Amy Garson Brown is asking, do you have a storefront in Austin? We, li we live in Pennsylvania, but have family in Austin and visit so often. No, we're just online. Uh, and Gwen Hicks Dottie says, may have missed it, but what's the name of the fabric used in the table runner, the orange fabric? Acorn, oh uh, wait, Autumn Love. It's by Riley Blake, and the designer is Lori Holt. And she designed the table runner also. Mm -hmm. So she designed the fabric and the pattern. Uh, coming back to Instagram, uh, what sewing machine do you use? I use a Juki TL-2010. We can add a link to it uh, below after we finish the video. That is a very powerful machine. It only does a straight stitch, so I use that. I have a Sashiko Baby Lock 2 that I use for quilting with a Sashiko look. I also have a Baby Lock Crescendo um, on the floor. I never use it. Um, but yeah, I might sell it. Um, but I, I like Baby Locks and Juki. Uh, Christy Barland and a few other people on Instagram are actually asking, what starch do you use? Oh, do you want to grab it? Right? Yeah, okay. sorry, it's in the bathroom. Um, I buy it at HEB, which is a grocery store in Texas, or Costco. Um, they changed the color of the lid. It used to be blue, it used to be gold. Now it's small gold, but it is premium starch, faultless. And it always has this red mark that says no flaking. And I, I just, you know, I just buy whatever they have. Uh, also, she had like, Eight? I have like eight in there, and I have yeah. some in here. I just didn't want to move my dog. That's so funny. Um, let's see. Donna Miller Laurie is asking, do you think you'll come out with different box sizes of the sew sampler? No, but we're going to have, I don't think so, but we're going to have specialty boxes. And they'll be different price points. Sometimes they'll be really low, sometimes they'll be higher. It, you know, we really don't make money on the boxes. It's pretty much a break-even product for us, um, but yeah, we have and we have some really cute stuff coming, like really cute. Um, L A E L Quilts is asking, where can I buy your fabrics in Europe? Oh, FatQuarterShop.com. We ship to Europe all the time. All right. Um, will you include a brief video for the notion that was in yes. the box this month? Yes. So that notion is. in here and I will demo it uh, at the beginning of September. All right. Uh, Leslie Harris just said she's so straightforward. Love it. Oh, um, and Anne Lang Lange says thanks for the Darling Rotary Cutter in this month's sew sampler box. Oh, awesome. Uh, Cynthia Fed is asking, how might I become part of Kimberly's Stitch Squad if I'm not on Facebook? Uh, so Facebook, it's really the only um, way to be in it. And it's, uh, we have somebody that monitors every question on Instagram, Facebook, but I can't do all of them. Um, so if you don't have Facebook, it's, but I mean, you can ask questions. We do a live stream every week. You can ask me questions in the live stream. All right, and then on Instagram we have a question. Can you mix poly and cotton in quilt top? Uh, you can. Like, people do that with crazy quilts. I would personally not ever do it. But, I mean, if you want to do it, you should just do whatever you want. Um, it might be a little hard. I would probably use polyester thread because, you know, you're, the stretch is not going to be the same. So, you're going to put cotton with poly, and when you especially if you're on the bias, it might, um, it might not go through your machine as easily. Um, I wouldn't do it, but can you do it? Of course. 
Um, Patrick and Crafts on Instagram is asking, I have a question that has nothing to do with this video. Is it hard to sew with flannel? I'm used to sewing only with 100% cotton. So for flannel, I, I agree. I think it's hard to use. I think it, um, I don't use it often um, because like I said, I don't have a lot of patience. If I was gonna do a flannel quilt, I would do something kind of similar to the Fat Quarter Cobblestone that's free on our website because they're big pieces. Um, as long as, you know, I would not do bias. I would try to not do anything with half square triangles. It just stretches a lot. So with, with uh, flannel, my tips would be to use pins and to use big pieces and straight seams, like straight, you know, don't get into the bias because that just really stretches. And I agree. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's much harder to work with. All right, we can go back to your question. Okay, so, do I have a secret closet with unfinished projects? Actually, I don't because last year we moved and I had so much stuff. I was like, I mean, I have four kids. So like I'm moving my stuff, my husband's stuff, my kids stuff, I mean, it's, it's insane. So actually all of my unfinished projects that were in process, I sold all of them on eBay. So I don't, but in a year or two, I will. Uh, do you plan to design fabric? No. Oh, soaking in liquid starch versus spraying starch. So that has been in our Kimberly Stitch Squad on Facebook. Lots of people talking about it. Uh, Peach Latrell uses, she's on our Stitch Squad. She uses liquid starch. I use spray starch. Um, I have never tried the liquid starch. So I would definitely ask questions in my group so that somebody who has more experience can answer. I kind of am a creature of habit. Um, I've talked about that before, but like I have had this brand of seam ripper for over 20 years. I love it. Why switch, right? So that's kind of how I am about my starch and how I am about artful thread. I love it. It works for me. I stay with it. If something works, I just keep it. It's the same way with like my shoes. Like if I like a pair of shoes, I just keep the pair of shoes. I don't, I, I'm not like adventurous. So I would say ask, sorry, I went off topic. I would say ask somebody who has more experience in my group, but I only use canned. Can oak shot cottons be sourced in the USA? Um, most of the fabric we buy is, is not made in the USA. Um, I'm not a manufacturer. That's not what I do, um, so I don't think so. Can you please move to Australia? That would be funny. I've never even been there. I don't even know if I could sit still long enough on a plane to go to Australia, but I would come um, someday when my kids are older. Can you write me an excuse for work so I can watch the live stream? It's so funny because the girls in customer service actually watch my live stream in between taking your phone calls because we get so many phone calls after that they have to know what um, people are asking. So I, my people at work get to watch it. <laughs> Can you explain why I, okay, this question got me. Can you explain why I usually see octagons on paper piece paper and the edges aren't raw? Is it not good to cut octagons and sew them together rather than to paper piece them? So if you did octagons, you would have to do um, Y seams. It would just be a lot of like, you could backstitch, go backstitch, it just, it would just take so much time. So if you want a pretty look, you have to English paper piece them. Um, that's what I would do. Um, and, and it's also bias. Everything is bias except two of your seams. So it's just a lot of seams and you would have to like backstitch, start, backstitch, start. You know, it'd be hard to see your needle, where you put it to start. It, it would just not look pretty. Why are you so darn cute? That is funny and thank you. I think, I don't think I'm that cute, but I think, I think I'm funny. But um, thanks, that makes me feel good. Can you use, okay, this is a good question that I actually worked with recently. Can you use cuddle as backing or minky as backing? What are your best tips? How do you lay it out? How do you baste it? Okay, so minky, that is like a whole nother animal. I would, I used minky on a quilt a week ago. I'm going to show that to you in an upcoming live stream. I would use a long arm quilter on Minky because that is a very thick 
thread, if you're going to use a long arm, I mean, you've got to have a certain needle. You've got to have a really strong needle and strong thread. So when my long arm quilter quilted it, he used uh, a thread called Milky, and it was thicker. And because I asked him, why is the thread thicker? And he was like, because you have Minky. So he just, he used a different thread than he usually uses. I would do a bigger pantograph, but the best thing about Minky is when you are doing the binding, your needle just goes through that Minky's like butter. And so if you put backing, if you put Minky on a backing, you, I got the binding done so quick. And I also didn't feel like I had to make as small of stitches because you don't see them. They just get hidden. So when you need something quick, that's a quick way to do binding. What is this lawn fabric Moda is starting to use? Um, I have some, let me grab it, hold on. Also, someone asked uh, Piggy, or said Piggy is chewing on something um, that is like a treat, I think, that he has, so don't worry. He's supposed to be chewing on it. Oh yeah, it. it's a bone. He, um, he only chews on it sometimes when he's bored. So this is lawn, and this is how it looks. It is thinner. It is meant to be thinner. It is very soft. And um, Bonnie and Camille made it so that you can put it on the backing and it can be kind of a summer quilt. I think they're fabulous. Um, and I am going to use it on a backing. I think they're, they're fabulous. So these are some of their lawns that are shipping at the beginning of October. This is called Smitten. This is the back. And this is the front. So they've got a couple of pieces. So yeah, I like it. Um, what brand of sewing light do I use? I use Dear Stella. The reason I use, we don't even sell it. Oh, here it is. Um, we don't sell it, but um, you can touch it. There's no heat or no, um, it doesn't give off heat, so it doesn't make your sewing room hot. So I use Dear Stella. Um, what is the best tip for basting? I, um, if I was going to baste a quilt, I would probably use fusible batting and then use curved safety pins. Um, what kind of light can I put on my sewing machine? So there are lights that I have bought off Amazon before. I, if you put the question, I think it's called Luminask or Lumatask, and they can go on the, um, kind of like the, the arch of your sewing machine. Um, we don't sell them. You can get them on Amazon. Um, I don't use one, but this, oh, this is a good question. Does Fat Quarter Shop carry old lines of fabric even though the website may not show them? No. Anything we have is online. So, um, no. Okay. Grammy Pammy is asking about length of fabric border and how do, do I mire the corners? And I don't. I just um, measure the quilt. I fold the quilt. I'll show you on this. So this is a long piece, right? So what I would do is on my, on my cutting table, I would measure this side. I would turn it. This is obviously before it's quilted. Turn to the other side and measure it. Take the average of the two. Then I would take my length of fabric that's going to be my border piece, put it on my mat. I would pin at the beginning, the end, and the middle. Then I would lay this down, pin beginning, end, middle, and then I would use pins throughout to keep it, um, just to keep it, and I would pin it, pin it, pin it, sew it down, press it, and then I trim my borders off. Um, that's how I do it. I uh, usually don't miter my borders. I, even if I do length of fabric, I don't miter, but I do have a fabulous video on how to miter. Um, if you ever want to learn how to miter, I uh, have a YouTube video on that. Also, just to clarify, because I think I saw this comment on Facebook as well, um, someone thought that you just cut out like a square as your border, not like pieced it you know, on the side. They thought it was all one connected Oh piece. yeah, no, it's not one connected piece. It's each one, so I'll do my sides first and then my top and bottom after. Um, so yeah, I think, do you, are there any more questions? We got lots. Okay. I can pull them up if you like. Yeah. Okay, let's 
see, stretching. Give me one second here to pull it up on the screen. And uh, we just got a sweet comment from Debbie. She said, just want to let you know that I love, love, love the So Sampler block this month. Oh, thanks. Um, Brooke Haig is asking, did you get the new Bonnie and Camille snippets? Yes, of course. We always buy all their fabric. Yeah, so that will be on our coming soon page on Monday. Uh, Noemi Bowers was just answering about the price of the table runner. It is $32.97. Okay, it's $32.97. Um, Gwenna hicks Dottie has a very good eye. She said, did you get a new iron? I thought the other one was yellow. I did. Okay, so this is funny. Our last live stream that we had to delete because it went so terribly bad because I couldn't get my baby lock threaded, my shashika can get it threaded. I just had like a horrible day. So like Lily left, she went to work, and then I start quilting. My iron went nuts. Like, I don't know what happened to it, but it like started spitting black stuff out, which my, my iron never does. I could not get it clean. I tried to cycle water in and out, and I just got a new one. And just, yeah, that day was just not my day. Uh, Peggy Hornbuckle Young says, do you need the template set to make the table runner? I just bought the table runner kit. Is there a template set? There's no template set. For this table runner, it is all corner squares. Corner, it's all corner squares or straight piecing. Brenda LaValle is asking, will the specialty boxes be available to everyone or just so samplers to start? Yes. So we made a mistake when we did our first one and we didn't, we didn't cut enough. Our second one, we had way too many. So we will first release it to Sew Sampler members, and then after that we will release it to everyone. Just um, Sew Sampler people, you, they do get special uh, privileges because they're in the program. Um, so we offer it to them first, and if we have some left over, there will be some for the store, but we are ordering plenty so that that doesn't happen again. Um, we never want you guys to be unhappy. You know, sometimes we make mistakes. Uh, and don't order enough and sometimes we make mistakes and order way too much which is a mistake for us so it's it's just a balancing game of not knowing this is all very new to us um, subscription boxes so we're just learning as we go um, and Anita Addison just said lol at the look piggy gives you when you stop petting him oh he is so spoiled so what he does this is the chair I have two of these in my room when I work or so right here I sit and he sits right back here he just sits right by me. Um, yeah, he's, he's spoiled. Um, Karen Wood said, I would love for your pup to get his own show. His own show, yeah. He needs to meet Doug the Pug. He has an Instagram and he has 11,000 followers. It's the Piggy Pug. I need to start posting more. Um, yeah, he's, he's my little baby. She has his own live stream. Oh, his own live stream. I don't know what he would do. All he likes to do is eat and pee. Oh, yeah, then Gwen uh, had said that he was chewing on something. Yeah, he's um, chewing on a bone. Uh, Anne Lange said, I don't pre-wash fabric and made a quilt with very bold contrasting colors. I do not I do use spray starch and steam while piecing. How would you wash it the first time so the colors don't bleed? So I would use color catchers. Um, they sell them. They're kind of hard to find, but they sell them in the laundry detergent aisle. So when I wash, I would use color catchers, and I would use several of them. And whenever I have washed a quilt, which is only my kids' quilts, I don't really like the look of a washed quilt, but um, I would always dry it outside on a either like lawn furniture or a fence. We have a, we have a black iron fence, so I'll just throw it over. Um, Teresa was saying one really important thing about Minky, it doesn't shrink, so if you don't pre-wash, that can be an issue. That's a good idea. So what she's saying is the Minky fabric, uh, it does not shrink, it is polyester. It is, um, so I would probably use polyester thread to quilt it. You definitely need a stronger, thicker thread. Um, but she's saying you should pre-wash the front because that way when you wash it, they're the same. So, and, and I agree with that, I would pre-wash. Um, and on the subject of making and cuddle. Or actually are, not pre-wash. You could either pre-wash or you could starch ahead of time. And if you starch it in my method, it will pre-shrink it for you. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. With Minky and Cuddle, we are releasing a bunch of videos about Cuddle yes. and Lux Cuddle um, yes. starting in September. Yeah, so in September, we had a specialist that works at Shannon Come, and she did 10 videos for us because I 
don't know much about Minky and um, I want you guys to have accurate information. She was totally awesome. Her name was Teresa. She came and she um, she did 10 videos and they're going to be all kinds of things that you can do with Minky and tips and so definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you will get notifications when those come out. Uh, Bunny Wilson is asking, do you work with the lawn fabric just as you do regular quilting cotton, same needle slash thread? Um, same thread, but I don't know about the needle. Um, I would probably use a thinner needle, um, a smaller needle, you know, because the needles they have, I would use a smaller needle. And maybe like a, let me see. The needles that I like lately are, I have them, I'm a little OCD. I just, see, I, I buy what I like. Um, they're called uh, Schmidt's Embroidery Needles 75-11, and I like them because they are very thin. And so that would be great with the lawn. Um, and they were recommended to me by Aditta, and I loved them so much that I bought two boxes of needles. So this will last me like two years. Deborah Grantham says, I have never used curved pins. They are not available where I live. I do not know what size of pin to purchase. What is the largest size I would like to order online? Um, I think that we sell them. Uh, just look on our site. If not, they sell them at Joann's. Um, they're good because when you, when you go to put your safety pin in, you don't have to like go in and come out. It just kind of curves. I have used them before. Um, so I don't know what size they make, but we might have them on our site if we don't. I think you can get them at any type of um, regular sewing store. It's just a basic notion. Um, Jennifer Sanford Burke is at, or she said, love the pillow, is that a kit? Uh, it's not a kit, uh, uh, but you can look at our, is the blog posted? Yes. Okay, so you can go to our blog or you can watch our video. And this is a charm, this is actually just eight squares, eight charm squares, a background fabric, backing, rickrack. It's just simple stuff you can get on our site. So if you wanted to make this, you could just get an autumn love charm pack, the gunny sack, uh, maybe like half a yard of this. And then I used uh, a, uh, to make it, I used the small flying geese ruler to make that. Um, and it was super easy. So all that is on our blog. All right. And um, the fabric requirements are on the blog. Uh, I know we have lots of questions on Instagram, but uh, because Instagram only lets you do live video for an hour and we just went over that. Um, anyone who had a question, feel free to resubmit it because I can't, we can't see them right now. Uh, but let's go back to Facebook and YouTube. Brenda Lavalley says, I see you have a small thread collection. Does thread ever get old and unusable? I don't think it does. Um, my husband makes fun of me because I have a ton of buttons and a ton of thread and hardly any fabric. Um, I basically, yeah, so I, I think the answer is no. I, yeah, I do not use this thread though because it's just too pretty. And I have, one, one of my sons is really funny like real funny like to where he's so funny that he we encourage him to do bad things sometimes because me and my husband cannot stop laughing because he's so hilarious he plays what is that game i've said block something some block game he plays it on my computer because it doesn't work on his ipad and so they all kind of come play it if i go to the bathroom he will walk over here and he will get like one of these and like just move it and then go back and then act like he didn't do it. Yeah. Cause that does get me a little, a little rolled up. I'm like, don't touch my thread. Um, and the last question we have right now, uh, at least is from Teresa. She said, what software do you use to put up the questions on the live stream? So we've been like popping people's questions up graphically. Um, we just like switch software and that's why we were having issues the past times. But anyway, it's called vMix. Vmix. Vmix software for anyone who yeah. wants to know if you're live streaming. Um, let's see. <laughs> so along the same lines, uh, Betsy Flysig was saying, help, I'm getting a big blue chat box right over Kimberly. Never saw this before. How do I get rid of it? 
That's me popping it up that sea. Sorry if it's in the way. Yeah, um, it's just a way before when we used to not, we have had complaints on that, but when we used to not do that box, we couldn't get to all your questions because she's, she's trying to look at a phone, a computer that's down there and a computer that's over here. And so it's like, it's so that we can answer your question. We're not trying to inconvenience you, but it's a way that we can actually like see your questions. Yeah, so I'm so sorry everyone else can see them because sometimes people tune in late and don't see the question. Um, comment from Bobby Ajani says, I love the sew sampler boxes. I was wondering if you would consider a sampler two with traditional fabrics. Yeah, let me just keep that in my, let me just keep that up here. All right, let me double check Instagram to see if we have any questions over here. Um, I think that's all the questions we have right now. Okay, so thanks for joining me. I will be back next Tuesday with something super cute that I'm going to be working on. Uh, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, join my Facebook group, follow us on Pinterest, give us love, like, like us on our videos, comment on our videos. We love chatting with you, and thanks for joining, and I will see you in a couple days.